Welcome to the life seminar for um, September 8th, 2021. I'm Nick Westerman. I am an accessible technology instructor with the Society for the Blind. And I am your host today. Um, today's topic, as I briefly mentioned a minute ago, is kind of about our smaller technologies. Um, like not the computer, you know, and JAWS that we spend a lot of time working on in our accessible technology classes, but some of the ones we use more in our living skills courses. Um, and uh, a lot of the times we can use them in just our day-to-day -day life, more of our, um, you know, things that can help us out with the small tasks that we have to do <clears throat> throughout our day. Um, we have uh, Rachel on here with us from Humanware. And in a minute, she's going to give you guys a presentation talking about the Victor Reader Stream, the Victor Reader Trek, and um, their Braille displays, as well as some other um, products that you may have available to talk about. Um, as a uh, courtesy to everybody, if you can mute your audio when you're not speaking, that's always very helpful, um, just because we get background noises. And you might be surprised at what people can hear over the meetings. So um, again, um, welcome, and we're going to just go ahead and get into it. The um, reason I was thinking about this the other day and wanted to bring it up was I was thinking about all the ways that I used my Victor Reader, and I use my iPhone and apps on it and um, other technologies, and I thought, you know, I, we don't get into a lot of discussion as to how you can use the Victor, and many people really don't utilize it to that extent. You might have it and take notes on it by using the recording feature. And you might download books from Bard, maybe podcasts. Um, you know, maybe you've put your, your textbooks for school or your classes with Society for the Blind on there. But there's really a lot you can do with the Victor Reader and the Victor Reader Trek. Um, for one example that I like to use is an probably and probably the one I use the most. Sorry, admitting people. Um, <clears throat> probably the way that I end up using my Victor most often is I use it for text files. So if I have notes or if I have most specific, uh, most uh, often recipes, I type them up and put them into a Word document, write them out exactly the way I like to prepare them, the ingredients that I need and everything like that. And then I put them onto my Victor via my computer. So as many of you may know or may not know, you have an SD card that's in your Victor Reader. It's on the top <clears throat> of the Victor Reader and it kind of just can pump, pop, punch in and out. And you can stick that into an SD reader on your computer um, or on your hub, or you can plug the Victor directly into the computer to interface with the SD card. And once you have that connected, it'll open up in File Explorer just like um, any other file folder, any other thumb drive we were to put on there, it would open up in File Explorer. And you have the options of looking through the folders there on the Victor and seeing the information that's there and putting information onto it. So in my case, I always take my recipes, type them up, um, title them as what the recipe is, and then I'll put it into the, um, the VR text folder. And that folder is designed from the formatting of the disk um, that the Victor does to read text, um, text documents, whether they're a, uh, a OCR type like document or a PDF or something like that, or just straight text or Word documents. I use um, particular Word documents because I just like using Word best. And it works great. Um, I can sit there and push play and pause as I go through gathering my ingredients. Um, making my, my, you know, recipe up, preheating the oven. I've got all the instructions right there. And I've got it on a small, easy device that's got good sound that I can simply push the play and pause button on that's very easy to find. Um, I don't have to worry about knocking my computer or my phone off the countertop as much. I don't have to worry about damaging them or getting them, you know, uh, wet too much. Victor is a very durable machine. Um, I did it. Diane did mention that when she does this, she puts it in a Ziploc bag and can still hear it and press the buttons through the bag. So that's another way that you can protect that better because the buttons are tactile and not a touch screen. 
you can be assured of getting the right button. <clears throat> so that's one of the ways that I use the Victor Reader. Um, I also use the Victor Reader for NLS bar. Um, I use it for podcasts. And the thing I like about that with the podcasts too, and I didn't mention this yesterday, but is you can download and transfer anything that you take from the online library, which Rachel will get more into. Um, you can transfer over to the SD side or the internal memory, I guess. Um, and you can put it over there on that. And so if you had a particular podcast that you really liked and wanted to share with people, you could switch that over onto your SD card and it will it'll transfer over to that file. And you can then share it with people via your computer um, or via you can share it to them by playing it on the Victor forum. You don't have to worry about it getting deleted. Um, so that's another way you can utilize the podcast features. Um, there's also available radio on there, which you can listen to uh, a lot of different radio stations. You can also get to the, um, pretty much anybody who's got an online radio station you can listen to from, through the Victor. And they also have neatly made up little folders that have like the American Council for the Blind radio stations on them. If you go to the humanware suggested um, stations. So that's another thing that also you can find within podcast as human works to get us a podcast to help you find a podcast if you're not sure what you're looking for that can give you an idea of how to find things better in there so there's and that let's see there's the nfb newsline for newspapers there's the uh, yeah, internet radio there's internet bars you can get bookshare on there um and daisy book format so there's multiple things that you can really do with it if you really experiment with your picture um that being said, I was also impressed with what um what uh Rachel had to say about their braille um uh reading devices. I'm sorry, that's not the correct name for it. <laughs> but their their braille displays and how you can utilize those to read in braille and um and they can connect with uh several of the formats like the bookshare devices. So with that being said, I'll let Rachel go into her presentation. And um, when she, you know, if you guys have questions throughout the time, um, just wait for a pause or something like that, and then you can unmute and ask the questions, or wait till the end, um, or, or wait till she gives you the opportunity. And thank you, and welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much, Nick. Good morning, everyone, and I'm so glad to be here. We had a great turnout yesterday, and I know we have some other great folks today. So, again, thank you so much for having me here. Um, and we're going to dive into to several things today. I loved Nick's uh, introduction to the Victor. Um, it's been kind of a very long time, if not the most popular product. Uh, would be the Victor Stream. I've seen folks um, come up at, to me at conferences and say, I have five of these things, and they just, they love them. They keep them around their house, and as Nick was mentioning, it can be very, very useful in a variety of situations. I love the recipe idea. Um, I do a fair bit of cooking myself, and I love that idea, you know, just putting recipes on there. You don't have to um, get any other appliances involved, and so there's that. But then, of course, there's also, as as named, the ability to listen to podcasts or Bard books or Bookshare or NFB Newsline content if you're signed up with those services. And in addition to that, you have podcasts, you have uh, online radio stations. So we often say that this is a media device, and the Victor Reader Stream is um, a media device. The Victor all of those things that we just mentioned but it also adds a GPS so just tiny tiny bit of history the Victor stream of course has come out quite a few years ago now and another product called the Trekker Breeze uh, it was just a standalone GPS product it was available for a number of years it's now been discontinued but the reason the Trek came into existence the Victor Reader Trek is we put those two products together. We thought folks love to read and they are often out you know, walking around or in a vehicle or a bus and we 
need to know our surroundings as blind travelers. So they put those two products together and here came the Victor Reader Trek. So I have the Trek on um, in the camera. So if you have low vision, you should be able to see it as well. And we will have some audio going through. So the Trek uh, looks similar to the Victor Stream. If you've not seen it before, it just is a little bit bigger because we have added things like the GPS portion, which I'll talk about, the Bluetooth chip. So with your Trek, if you are listening to a book or you're using the GPS portion, whatever side of the device you're using, you can connect it to Bluetooth. So you can use your favorite pair of Bluetooth headphones or your favorite speaker, or if you have hearing aids that can connect to a device through Bluetooth, you can use those as well with the Trek, whereas the Victor Eater Stream uh, doesn't have Bluetooth in it. So that's kind of a nice additional feature. And I'll just show you here. So um, in addition to the the Victor Trek, so it looks similar to the stream. You have your keypad and your similar buttons. It's all in the similar layout. However, the Trek has the addition of some tactile feedback on the two, four, six, and eight buttons. So it really helps if you're out walking around with it because it is a GPS, and we'll get into some of the specific aspects of that very easy to use with one hand, because um, those would be your directional arrows. What do I do next? You know, where, what intersection did I just pass? Those types of things. So I really like that aspect as well. And I'll just give a quick overview, because uh, Nick was very thorough uh, in his overview of what this stream slash track offers, which was just fantastic. I'm just going to run through the different modes so you can see. So I'm just pressing that mode button or the circular button above the two. Offline bookshelves, text files, one, file, one, online bookshelves, podcasts, zero. Podcast okay, so feeds. we have add podcast feed. So there's podcasts, uh, there's offline books, which of course lets you listen to music or text files. I think I just have a manual in there at present. And you have the online bookshelves. This is where you can do things like add your favorite podcast feeds, add your favorite radio stations. I'll run through this bookshelf just quickly. NFB Newsline, 23, books, bookshare, three, books, one. Okay. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's St So we have Bookshare, we have NFB Newsline, so those services, you can add those. Internet Radio, two, playlists, one, Humanware Playlist. English North America. So this um, also leads into what Nick was saying about the Humanware Suggested Playlist. So it has predefined options. I believe Humanware has um, an information podcast, and we've put some information and material out on there, so you can always subscribe to that. It has things like from the American Council for the Blind and just stations from around the world, really. And then you can, of course, add your own. So if internet radio is something that you really enjoy, we have all of that available for you right here. References, zero, files. Search on Wikipedia. And this is something else that's pretty neat, is the references. So if you're listening to a podcast and you encounter a topic that you want to know more about, you can search for it on Wikipedia. Or if you encounter a word that you're not sure what it means, you can search it on Wiktionary. And so the Trek kind of becomes, and the stream, kind of becomes a small tool enabling you to know information as you're listening to something. NLS Bard, three books, okay. one. That's the winner Bye. with Frank Gifford, Tom Brookshire, and Ray Scott. Okay, and that is the NLS Bard. So lots of options here. Uh, there's a few more in the menu, in the online menu that you can get and add to the Trek or stream if you want to, to do that. So you'll notice, as I'm sure you're all very familiar with these products, that so far we've just really done a brief overview of what the stream and the Trek offer. You've been able to hear that the interface hasn't changed, 
but you will notice that when I press the mode button, so that's that circular button above key two, that there is a third mode on the Victor Trek, and that is the GPS mode. So I'm going to talk just briefly about some of the things that you're able to do with the GPS, and then I can demonstrate one feature in particular. So the GPS, of course, when you get a signal, doesn't require any data connection or Wi-Fi connection, just requires you to connect to the satellites. Uh, sometimes you can get it if you're near a window. I have a window in this office, but it's not very near me. So we won't have any real-time GPS signal. But I went outside with the truck yesterday to get a signal, and it was very, very fast. Probably 15, 20 seconds after I got outside and the open, the truck found a signal. And that's the thing of it. We have really improved the maps that the Trek now uses. So if you're familiar with the Trek, you may know that we previously used something called TomTom Tom Maps from that GPS provider. We now use something called Here Maps, and Here are the same company who produce maps for autonomous vehicles. So the accuracy of the POIs has been greatly improved. In addition to that, so not only do we have new maps and we are updating those as well, we also have the ability to explore an environment virtually. This has got to be one of my favorite features. Um, I know in the past on the Braille note taker side, you had Sendero GPS just for comparison and you had other GPS products. But if you've ever used one of those note takers where you have uh, send our GPS so you'd put in an address hey I'm going to a conference in a city and I'd like to know what's around that hotel is there you know restaurants or is there a mall or other sites that you might be interested in you could put that in your GPS and then you could virtually walk around that place the trek now has that ability as well so and I'm going to show you this I'll put in a landmark I have a few of them saved and we will just walk around a, a place and you can put in any one. So the maps cover, of course, the US, Canada, we have regions for Europe, Australasia. So it's very, very far reaching all of the maps that we have. And the process for downloading and installing the maps has changed as well. So if you have a trek, you may know that in the past you had to connect your trek to your wireless network download these maps which could take anywhere from like eight to twelve hours it was really download let's just say just the u.s uh not even talking about canada or any other regions that you wanted so the way that you download these maps now is you go to our website you're able to download the software because you, the trek needs you know an updated software then you download the maps and you put them on an SD card, just like Nick was talking about, where if you wanted to share a podcast with someone, you could copy that file from the internal memory of the Trek to the SD card and then put that SD card in your computer and share that file. You can do the same with the map. So you put them on SD card, you choose whichever map packages you want, you put them on the SD card using a computer, then you load that SD card into the Trek. The Trek automatically examines the maps and will install them. So it takes the process of 8 to 12 hours to possibly longer to get maps on your Victor Reader Trek uh, into about, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection and how fast it is to download a map package. So that is something that's really exciting. So those are some of the new enhancements and as mentioned we will look at the virtual exploration in just a few minutes the couple of things i want to mention that the trek can do is of course tell you where you are look at points of interest around you you can set landmarks which are like breadcrumbs so like my place where i live is in the middle of a block um, and just for fun i put a landmark or breadcrumb to the at the entrance to my building so if i'm walking down the block or maybe i'm coming to the place where i live at a different way you know kind of from around the other side of the street 
the truck will let me know when I'm approaching my landmark and landmarks are voice tags. So I have, you know, entrance to building and what the truck will do is as I'm getting close to it, it lets me know it plays that voice tag or that landmark. So whether you are wanting to denote the entrance to your building, whether you want to denote the uh, bus stop, maybe it's a bench or a pole or a trash can in some locations or anything that you want to mark with a voice tag, you're getting pretty close to it. It will tell you. Not only is that great for, you know, finding hard to find entrances to buildings or finding obscure, you know, benches or trash cans or whatever it is you're looking for. This is great in something that we call open area mode. So this is a feature if you are not on grid, maybe you're in a, in a plaza type situation. So I, I've used this in a mall situation where you have all of these outdoor stores and it's of course kind of hard to keep that line travel and know, okay, I was at, you know, Walmart, maybe I want to go to Nordstrom's depending on your or or something like that. So you have that. And even if you're not on the street, so you're in a mall, you're camping, you're at a beach, you're hiking, any place that you don't have GPS coverage, you can still landmark. So you can drop those breadcrumbs. You can landmark various places and the truck will guide you to it instead of, you know, t telling you, hey, turn left on Main Street. And then when you're coming up to the entrance to a building, it'll tell you the landmark. <coughs> it will tell you uh, if you're at a campground or something and you're marking your campsite. If you walk away from it and you come back, it'll say, you know, head um, campsite at 2 o'clock in 900 feet or something. So it'll tell you that, you know, your campsite is maybe a little bit off to your right at, you know, 900 feet or whatever it is. And you can keep getting information as to how close you are to that landmark as you go. So that's open area mode. That is kind of a specific feature to the trek. And you can also record routes. So if you're walking from your house to the grocery store and before, you can record the route. And then the trek will record each street that you cross and each turn that you make. So then you are able to review the route at a later time indoors. You can then use that route to kind of reverse it and backtrack and go back home. And it's just great for keeping track of routes that you want to review at a later time or that you want the trek to guide you through. So once this route is walked and recorded, you can then pull that up on your trek, kind of like a saved destination or route and the trek will guide you as if it is well it'll it'll guide you through those those routes so i love that feature that's very very powerful for saving routes and the last big thing on the trek we've covered landmarks we covered routes covered finding out where you are and then of course if you're just you know walking or if you are riding a bus or being driven in a car the truck will announce uh, certain things around you would tailor to your preference. So the next thing I want to cover is the virtual exploration. This, this also is one of my favorite features. So I like to, you know, put in different places, um, either around the state or even the city um, or in different states and see what's around. So. I have a family on the East Coast. I put in my sister's address one time and I was just looking at what was around her house. And I was like, hey, I didn't know you guys had a barbecue place around here. That's so great. So it's just very cool. The things that you can find out once you have this ability. So it's very cool. Also, it'd be great for learning a new neighborhood or just kind of getting familiar with, you know, what's around your, your city or your or if you have a friend who you're interested in seeing, hey, you know, what are their streets like if you're going to go visit them and you want to familiarize yourself with uh, what's around. So we're going to jump in here and I'm just going to show you this real quickly. So I have some landmarks and you can notice these are landmarks in reference to breadcrumbs and open area mode. But each time you enter an address, it will save it as a landmark as well. So you can always go back to it. 
and if you have GPS signal, you can be guided to it. Or in this case, we're just going to choose a landmark and we're going to explore uh, the plate in what's called virtual map browsing mode. So I'm going to open this up. Go to page. Hey, I don't want to do that. Canceled. We need to get in the right mode first. Orientation. All right. Searching for satellites. So that's the third mode on this track. You have online bookshelves, offline bookshelves, and orientation. So I'm in orientation. Now, if I had signal, it would tell me that GPS is not in. You would hear a series of clicks, and it would start telling you which street you're on and things like that. Again, because I'm indoors, it's not going to get a signal. But because I've downloaded the maps onto my SD card and installed them in the track, I don't need to have a GPS signal in order to virtually navigate. So let's choose a landmark here. Select a landmark as your destination. 21 landmarks. I'm going to choose a different one. Campus. Enter an address. From yesterday. 216 Olo Holloway, 325 California, 1923 East Boothurst Drive, Scottsdale, All right. Arizona. This isn't even in the same state as us. This is great. So I will choose this. Press confirm to start instructions. Press and hold it. Press up to enter map browse mode. Okay. Warning. So Turn instructions to a landmark may guide you through unfamiliar paths. So I'm going to press 2. That's the 2 key or up arrow to go into map browsing. Entering map browsing mode. You are currently on East Boothurst Drive, heading east. All right. So it gave me a lot of information there. I've chosen a landmark in Arizona, and it told me what street I'm on, what direction I'm heading. So to start traveling virtually up this block, I'm heading east. I'm going to press to go forward a block. In three way intersection, East Boothers Drive crossing North 91st Street in front. Okay, so that tells me what I'm going to be crossing. I'm going to go forward again. In 283 feet, three way intersection, North 91st Street crossing East Hillary Drive. Okay, so I'm just kind of walking forward through this. Now, if I want to see what's around, first, I can press the 5 key, just like the Where Am I key. It also works in GPS mode. Heading northeast, near 14897 North 91st Street. Current intersection, three ways. North 91st Street crossing East Hillary Drive. Okay, so it just gave me what address I'm near, what streets I'm intersecting. Now, if I want to see if there are any businesses or any points of interest around, I'm going to press and hold five. What's around? One item. One. 1923 East Boothurst Drive. 1923 East Boothurst. Map browsing mode. Okay. So what it was telling me is what's around as far as the GPS is, is just that landmark that I put in. So if I want, I can turn right or left. I'm going to turn right. On your right. East Hillary Drive. So now I'm looking at East Hillary Drive, and I'm going to do that same thing as if I'm, I'm going to walk forward one block, so press the 2 key. In 372 feet, three-way intersection, East Hillary Drive crossing North 91st Way. Okay, I'm going to go up one more time. Can't go that way. That's awesome. So what that told me is that is basically the end of the block. And now I know if you turn right on this type of street, dead. So I can press the 8 key and kind of turn around. In 373 feet, three-way intersection, East Hillary Drive crossing North 91st Street on your left. Okay, and we'll see if there's anything around here. What's around? One item. One. 1923 okay. East Boothurst so Drive. 1923 East Boothurst Drive. 592 feet. Okay, so this must be a highway. So we have the just that, that landmark. But if you choose um, any type of, of place, so whether you have a big highway like this appears to be, or you've put um, the address to a grocery store in and saved that as a Map landmark. Browsing mode. When you save that as a landmark, it will then tell you um, what's around. So it would be you know, the grocery store and other businesses. So this is a great way to kind of get your environment. Um, and
and said, okay, here's these straights, uh, here's these uh, points of interest. And then of course, as you're walking with the trek, you have those options as well. It'll tell you what's around. You can enable or disable that as fit for you. We have lots of verbosity options in the menu. So Trek offers some excellent you know, media consumption tools as we talked about in the beginning, but it also offers this GPS with the virtual navigation, uh, which I love. So I'm able to kind of cruise around and see what's available and the, all with the maps that I have installed. So you have lots of, <laughs> lots of places uh, that you can choose from and uh, lots of POIs to look at. So that is the Trek in a nutshell and the GPS that it offers. So we're gonna power this off now and we're going to switch gears. And then of course, if there are any questions, please, oh, maybe this might be a good time to stop. And does anyone have any questions on anything we covered so far before we go to Braille displays? All right. Take that as a sign that we will just carry on. All right. So now we have in front of the camera whoa, our newest Braille display. So for folks who have been uh, using our products for a while, you will no doubt be familiar with the Brilliant line of products. We've had that out for a number of years, 10 actually. And it, this uh, at the beginning of this year, we released two new products, the Brilliant 40X and the Brilliant 20X. So in front of the camera here, I have the Brilliant 20X. Folks really like this if they're on the go or they want just kind of a smallish display to put in their bag and carry with them. This is not just a braille display. So the um, X stands for 10 years of kind of braille displays. And this isn't just a braille display that acts as a terminal. So you connect it to a mobile phone or a computer and you would read and write braille with it. This is what we call an intelligent braille display. So it has storage capabilities. Um, you can see here on the 20, there is an SD card slot. You have a USB port for flash drive. You have USB-C charging. You have, of course, the signature thumb keys on the front. Just like if you've used any of our other braille products, you'll no doubt be familiar with those. And you have, of course, the Perkins style keyboard on the front with the two spaces below the braille display and some cursor router keys and you also have a headphone jack and some volume buttons um, because we hope to in the future support audio so if you have an mp3 file or something uh, because this 20 is equipped with a mono speaker and the 40 uh, is equipped with some stereo speakers so you'll be able to perhaps listen to content if you you know, put it on an SD card. That's still uh, yet to be determined how all that will pan out, but it is very, very exciting nonetheless. So this, you know, we've we've talked about kind of some of the features and the kind of the specs it has. It does have internal storage. So if you want to store files on it, you most certainly can. So in addition to connecting this up to five Bluetooth devices, one USB device, you have an editor on here. So you're able to create text files and you can read other file formats as well. So .docs, .brf, .rtf, .html, all of those. And then you can write in a text format. So once you do that, you can then copy the file onto a card or flash drive, or if you connect this up to your computer through USB, it will show up as a removable drive and you can copy it over that way. You have a calculator, you have a date and time, you have the ability to uh, connect this to various other devices, as mentioned. But one of the biggest things is you are able to read books on this device. So we have connections to three libraries so far. That would be Bookshare, NFB Newsline, and Bard 
the Braille collection on Bard Mobile. So you're able to read those books. We support Daisy Books. So we have a Victor Reader application on here. And we were just talking about Victor Reader. And everyone's very familiar with that. But the ability, just like you can on Victor Reader, to navigate by words and phrases and, uh, I guess, heading levels and add bookmarks, you have those capabilities on this device. So you can read in Braille all of those features. So it's a little note taker, a little book reader, um, a little... Uh, peripheral, I guess, to your computer that you can connect up or to your phone. And that is Brilliant 20. And that's why we say it has intelligence. So it's, you know, equipped with Bluetooth, it's equipped with uh, a terminal mode, it's equipped with with an editor and a calculator and the date and time and the books. And um, we are beta testing a new update. So this product is has been out for, you know, few months now and we are updating it as we speak with more features and enhancements and I'm just so excited to see where this product is right now and then where it's going to go. So we have the Brilliant 20 with all of those features. We also have, and I'll put this under the camera so you can guys, if you have low vision, are at least able to get a visual look at it. To do braille display demos because i'm just sitting here talking at you guys i guess <laughs> there's no speech but um uh, that's okay we're making it work so here's the brilliant 40 and for those who d who don't see it it's similar to the brilliant 20 it's just longer right still have the keyboard still the space bars on the bottom below the braille display the cursor router keys the usb port those are both on the left hand side and Brilliant, if you've seen a previous generation, will be familiar to you. We have the command keys, and those are circular keys on the left and right of the Braille display. These are only available on the 40 cell, and they're for extra navigation, um, and they do different things depending on the screen reader in use. And we have the thumb keys, thumb keys on the front, and all of the same software features. So the terminal and the editor and the ability to read books or NFB Newsline content. And then of course you can connect it up to the same number of Bluetooth devices, five and one USB device. So whether you look at or got a brilliant or free the operating system, if you will, will work just the same and you get all the same features. So these are our newest Braille displays. They're they're making a splash just because of all the things that they can do. And um, so they're, they're very different from, uh, from uh, just other products and kind of fits that market of, you know, you, you might have used a note taker in the past, but you may not need all the features that a note taker provides, but you still want to have access to Braille and to book reading and quick note taking and things like that. So these Braille displays offer that, and I just cannot say enough good about these braille displays and what they do and and all of that so if that was a very very quick overview of kind of the, the brilliant 20 the brilliant 40 the victor trek and i want to stop and ask if anyone has any questions and if we have any low vision folks on the line because i can do a quick rundown i have uh, some low vision products not physical products that i can put on the video but I can kind of tell you the highlights of some of our low vision products from our website. And I know that you can get appointments with some folks up at Society for the Blind, and maybe Nick can talk more about that if you're interested in demos of any of the low vision products, at least. So um, just to, for the low vision products where she was speaking um, direct, mostly about you know video magnifiers, I don't know how many of you have seen Video magnifiers. So the video magnifiers can be very useful for um, quickly reading text, quickly doing things at the stores. Um, and all of those products can be uh, just shown to you at the low vision clinic. You can make an appointment with the low vision clinic and they can show to you what you have. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to go over, we I know at least three or four of our students on here are low vision. Um, so if you'd like to go on and talk about the um, video magnifiers, that would be fantastic. 
All right. Super. Thanks, Nick. And thanks, Linda. I did uh, see your chat there. Perfect. So the first one I'll talk about is the Explore 5. So this is a 5 inch. This is a handheld magnifier. And so it has, you know, it's, it's one of those digital magnifiers that you may have used. It has powerful magnification. So it goes up to 22x. You can customize it. There's a lot of different enhancement modes, but I know a lot of folks really enjoy the size. It's, you know, only five inches. So you can put in a pocket or in an egg, or it's most convenient for you. Pull it out, you just open it up and it's instant on, and then you are able to read uh, what you need to read. So it has, you know, different modes that you can use. It, it folds up. You can put, you know, I'd say something small underneath it. And, uh, and so it has those, those options available to you. Um, it has a long lasting battery and, you know, all the things that you would think to find in a handheld magnifier. So for something small and portable, I can't say enough about good about the Explorer 5. And we believe that folks either at the Low Vision Clinic or at, I think it's North State Assistive Technology, have demos of this product and so you can see it for yourself. So the next one is the Explore 8 handheld magnifier. So we're going from the smallest product that we offer in the handheld magnifier line and we will go up to the largest. So the Explore 8 that is our kind of series, I guess, the Explore. That is an eight inch uh, video or magnifier. And this, again, features a little more powerful magnification. So this is up to 30x times. You have, again, those customizable functions, just like you would on the Explore 5. But this one has a touch screen so that you can navigate through the various menus. And this introduces the option to view near or view far. So it has, they call it twin HD cameras. So if you are looking at something far away, you can kind of zoom in on that. Or if you're looking at something near, then you have that camera option available to you as well. You can store images in a gallery. So this is kind of nice for if you take a picture of something and you want to review it later. And just like on the five, they have physical buttons. So if you find it easier, you don't have to use touchscreen to adjust, you know, zoom or contrast. You have the physical button to adjust it easily to your liking. Okay, so that's the Explorer 8. Again, still handheld, but it is getting a little bit bigger. Well, we're all familiar with, you know, seven or eight inch tablets. That's what this fire offers but you can also fit some little piece of paper under it which makes reading something of that format quite easy so the next one we have is the connect 12 so we've gone from 5 to 8 to 12 and the 12 is a tablet um, with a stand of course and not only does it do all of the magnification options that you have it allows you to connect to the Google Play Store. You can download applications on it. You can take pictures of pieces of paper or printed material and it will read them to you. It has a special font called Diamond Edge. And from what I understand, it's a very smooth font. People really enjoy reading with that. And you can connect up a, a Bluetooth keyboard to it. You can access things like Bookshare and those types of, of options and Google Docs. So it's it's more a tablet uh, browser, uh, you know, kind of an advanced uh, digital magnifier. So depending on your needs, if you need to you know, surf the web or you want to download applications or you want to take a picture of something and maybe fill it out on the device itself, you have all of those options. And there are physical buttons to adjust the zoom and the contrast and other options that you would need to. Uh, so if you want to customize that, you can. Uh, but this is quite um, an advanced piece 
of technology that we have and I know the folks that use it they really seem to enjoy it and it does fold up and store away if you need to put it away for a while as well so that's involved and we see that a lot uh, folks want to keep it on their desk and maybe go through mail with it uh, they can do that as well or whatever it is that they want to use it for so the next one we'll go through we got two more Okay, is the Reveal. So now we're on to the Reveal. And this came out a few years ago. It's the Reveal 16 HD digital magnifier. So this is our largest CCTV. Again, it does fold up and we do offer an optional carry case for it. So if you need to, you can transport it from place to place. And this offers a 16 inch screen that you can adjust so again we love the physical buttons on our magnifiers so you can adjust your zoom and your contrast to your preference this goes up to 10x magnification um, for the optical zoom but then for the digital magnification it goes up to 45x so you have quite a bit of power there uh, you're able to program contrastable colors you have high resolution video output so if you are maybe reading a book or looking at some papers or looking at something else that you want to examine in detail this would be a great option we have polarized LEDs you can also get this with an XY table so that's the tray that goes underneath the CCTV or the screen and then you can easily adjust whatever it is that you are putting underneath it to view and I already mentioned it's foldable so that's the reveal 16 HD digital magnifier so that's just a CCTV screen with all of those other aspects the last digital magnifier I'm going to briefly believe, briefly run through is I can find it here here we go the reveal 16 I HD full digital magnifier. So we just looked at the Reveal 16. The 16i stands for intelligence. So this, I would say, is the kind of top of the line, this flagship magnifier CCTV device. And what this has is very similar to the Connect 12. This allows you to connect to the Google Play Store to download applications and you're able to then connect uh, into all those applications on a 16 inch screen. And what it also has is optical character rec recognition or OCR. So you can take a picture of something just like you could with the Connect 12 and it will read it to you. So I know a lot of folks really enjoy that nice text to speech. So if they're experiencing any or eye strain, take a picture of something, this device will read it to you able to fill out something and it says digital editing so just like on the connect 12 you take a picture of something you want to digitally edit you can do that this does come equipped with a touch screen and we have bluetooth connections internet connections and this of course has the adjustable screen as with the other reveal uh, 16 digital magnifier and the magnification will be the same the 10x for the optical zoom and the 45x for the digital magnification and you have polarized LEDs it's foldable as well and so this again bigger CCTV most folks would kind of keep it on their desk or if they do need to transport it that is optional so you have all the way down again just quick recap starting with the Explorer 5 all the way up to the a reveal 16 uh, HD digital magnifiers so those again quick preview of our products all of them are available on our website so if you want to get more information you can go to humanware.com um, human and ware.com and I'll put a link to our website in the uh, in the chat here and then you can just search for each of our products. Uh, if you click on the low vision link, that's where they will all be listed. So you don't have to remember each of the product names. Just go to humanware.com, 
search for the low vision link, click on that, and then you will be presented with all of these products. So you can take a closer look at each of them. And there are pictures available. And then as mentioned before, if you need to go to, or if you want, I believe you can schedule an appointment with the low vision clinic at society or, um, take a look at their yeah. retail store and uh, maybe Nick can Yeah, can so about that. you can <laughs> you guys can contact the Society for the Blind just contact on the main number and you can ask for the Low Vision Clinic if you haven't been evaluated recently um, and you want to see some of these products you can also go directly to just you can call and find out uh, to make an appointment I believe at this point in time you have to make an appointment to go into the um our Low Vision store there at Society for the Blind where they may have the uh options to show you of these devices um, and you have to make that up with that's North State Technology that's part of the, they own the store there in Society for the Blind um, but they have a lot of these products and um, there's a lot of great things about them I think um, that while my vision has gotten poor enough that none of the digital magnifiers are that great for me anymore when I was in school back you know 15 years ago I've been legally blind my whole life it would have been quite a nice feature to have to have something that you could um, actually project the board um, onto my screen for me so that I could see what was up there on the board. So um, kind of the point of this thing was just to think about the, these types of technologies that we have and the different kinds of ways that you can really use them to, you know, improve and, and make things better in your life. Hello. So, yeah. So does anybody have any questions? I do if you can hear me. Um, yep, I can hear you. Yep. Okay, good. Hi, this is um, Susie, Susan Browning. Um, so I'm a substitute teacher, legally blind. Um, so yeah, I'm using you know, Ruby magnifier quite a bit, bending over, hurting my poor lower back. <laughs> but um, anyway, I am intrigued. Um, but I'm also wondering, if years ago, my... Um, my counselor approved the Orcan glasses and I had them for a year and what I didn't, I know that's another company and all together, but um, what I didn't like about that was that it was reading out loud the auto, you know, I don't want to disrupt other people or, you know, the classroom. So most of these devices have a, I would imagine they do have an ear jack, you know, for earphones. Yes. Or yep, they do. Yep. You can plug them in and read in peace and, and silence uh, yes yeah and i like what you said about the ocr you know from a distance so i'm kind of wondering um yeah, yeah i'll connect probably make an appointment that. connect 12. okay yes yeah, so if i'm in a classroom supporting children with the regular teacher up front you know sometimes it, you know it's hard to see i'm choosing my phone mostly trying to take a picture and enlarge and see what's going on up there Anyway, so I'm curious, you know, about the logistics of it. And it seems like a lot of products compete with our phones, you know, and the apps that are on our phones. And we get used to using those. And, and some, you know, other devices are probably better. But it's just a matter of getting really familiar with them and, and you know, um, reaching our, you know, objectives of what we have to ha need to get done. Of All course. right, getting familiar with the device, and sometimes it's just nice to use a dedicated device. Like your phone, you know, not that you would need 45X, because if you need 45X, you need to be using a screen reader. But you know what I mean? The phone is not going to go up to that much power, uh, kind of a right. exaggerated, okay. you know, comparison. Mm -hmm. But just having that dedicated device can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. Connect 12 has an optional distance camera that you can get, and you could probably do the same with the 16, but 12, especially because you're in education, which mm -hmm. is where we do a lot of our work, I would recommend, you know, look at the Connect 12 and look at that optional 12. Okay. Uh, 25X, I believe it is, uh, distance camera that you can connect to it. So you take a picture of the board, you can then put that on your device, and then you can read it, you know, with your own font preferences and magnification preferences and all of that. Right, and I could def connect 12, is that what you said? Yeah, the connect 12. I could justify that with my department of rehab counselor, you know, for ongoing, yeah. Um, being able to keep working. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, rehab wants you folks to stay employed. So yeah, Susie, if you can, I would definitely recommend getting an appointment 
just because then if you you know see the products yourself you'll know exactly mm-hmm. hey this really works for me or hey you know maybe i need something else but just kind of from what you've said i'd recommend the connect 12 with the distance camera um beautiful and, thank you so much there. of course thank you mm-hmm. does anyone else have any questions for rachel All right. Well, thank you all for coming and participating today, and I hope you got something good out of it. And uh, thank you again, Rachel, for coming and uh, and presenting again. Thank you. Beautiful job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susie. And thank you, Nick, for having me, and thanks, everyone, for coming. And you need to get in touch with me, get in touch with Nick, and he can pass it on to me. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.